Hello everybody, this is Gary McGar. Welcome back to another video of Stardew Valley. For today's video, I'm going to showcase some really cool tips and tricks that you can use to enhance the way you play the game. If you don't know any of these tips or tricks, then you are obliged to subscribe to the channel. So hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. So when future videos are released, because they are released quite regularly, you'll be notified. And I just want to say thanks a million for your support so far. The channel has now over 3,000 subscribers and it continues to grow. So let's see where we're going to get a few weeks from now. I hope you are excited as I am. I'll see you in the video. The first tip we're going to talk about is how you can absolutely abuse artifact troves in this game. As we all know, we can purchase artifact troves from the Desert Shredder for 5 Omni Geodes apiece. But I'm going to show you a method that will allow you to farm hundreds and thousands of Omni Geodes very effectively so Clint can break open hundreds and thousands of artifact troves. Why do you want Clint to break open artifact troves? Here's why. You can get pirate's treasures out of artifact troves and they're very common. You can also get golden pumpkins and you can even get pearls. Golden pumpkins and pearls are universal loved gifts they can also sell for lots of money. So I sought all of those artifacts. Let's see how much they're worth. The treasure chest, 5,000 gold. The golden pumpkin, 2,500 gold. And the pearl, 2,500 gold. That's a lot of money. And you can very easily get those from getting Clint to break open tons of artifact troves. So here is a nice little setup guide for you when it comes to getting lots of loot. Combine the luck ring with the burglar ring. Do this twice, so you have double the luck, double the item collection. Equip those two rings to your character straight away. Once this is done, you want to head off into the mines and just take a nice monster musk. This will greatly increase the odds of monsters appearing. Go down into the skull cavern and just start farming carbon ghosts. With the burglar rings equipped, it, these ghosts will drop tons of omni geodes. Super quick tip if you use your hoe on the crystallariums, you will get back the original gem that you put inside the crystallarium. So always do this before you put a new gem in there so you're not wasting gems. Next up, let's talk about Wild Bait. When you get 4 hearts with Linus, you'll unlock a nice event with him where he will teach you the recipe Wild Bait. There's two reasons why you want to get your hands on Wild Bait as quickly as possible. The first is that it has a chance to pull up two of any fish in the game while you're fishing. Wild Bait will also give you a 25% fish bite rate, which is absolutely huge, so it works much better than regular bait when it comes to fish nibbling on your rod so you can pull them in. To make the wild bait, all you need is fibre, bug meat and slime and all of these resources are very very easily farmed inside the mines, in the starter levels. All those ingredients are all over the place, huge abundance. Look how fast it took for that fish to bite compared to regular bait, it was very fast and today isn't even a super luck day. So we just pulled up two fishes here and we got double chubs which is really good for us because chubs are really good for energy, they're not so good for health but are really good for energy. This is why wild bait can be so overpowered, because you can put up two of any fish, which means you could put up legendary fish. Speaking of legendary fish, there's a quest here in Key's secret walnut room called Extended Family, and this quest al allows you to recatch the legendary fish all over again. Now, they're not the original legendary fish, but their difficulties and the money they sell for is the same. As long as the quest is active, you can catch as many legendary fish as you wish. I just caught a ton of legend fish today. A gold star legend 2 fish goes for 11,250 gold. Now, you could catch other legendary fish such as the angler, but the reason why you want to try to catch the legend 2 is because it goes for a lot more money. You can make huge profits using wild bait and tackling that quest over and over again. Next up, let's talk about the slime hutch. Once you get Robin to build a slime hutch on your farm, you will unlock a new resource you can get from slimes called the slime egg. And slime eggs can sell for quite a lot of money. But what you might not know is that you can actually go ahead and demolish this building and still get slime eggs. The slime much takes up quite a lot of space in your farm. So if you don't want it there, you can just very easily go to Robin, get her to demolish the building and you can still farm slimes for slime eggs to make huge money if you ever decide to go to Skull Cavern or the mines. So let's go to the mines right now. Let's fight some slimes to see do they still drop slime eggs after the building has been demolished and they do. I just got a green slime egg right there from a slime in the mines, no problem at all. So if you have a slime hutch on your farm and you don't want it, just get rid of it. You won't lose the perk 
for gathering slime eggs from slimes. The next tip I want to share with everyone today is the importance of upgrading a watering can, but more importantly, when to upgrade a watering can. It's very good practice to check the weather forecast every single day. If the forecast tells you the next day is going to be a rainy day, then that is the best opportunity for you to upgrade your watering can. All you have to do is plant your seeds, water your crops today. Once you're finished, you just simply have to visit Clint, get Clint to then upgrade your watering can because it's going to rain the next day. Now, it does take Clint three days to upgrade a watering can, but on the third day when you get the watering can back, you will then be able to water your crops. You just have to wait until after nine o'clock, which is still the morning time, so you're good to go. So I just gave Clint the watering can there to upgrade. What we're going to do now is we're just going to skip into the next day. As we can see, it's raining, so we don't have to water crops. And there's now only one day left for Clint to upgrade the watering can because the day you give him the watering can to upgrade counts as the first day, which is really nice. So now we're on the third day. We get back our watering can and we can very easily go back, water the crops again, no problem at all. It's also worth noting too that if you have the key to the city, you can enter Clint's store much earlier if you need to get the watering can back as early as possible if you have hundreds of thousands of crops that you actually need to water. The next tip we're going to talk about is the solar panels. As we all know, solar panels generate battery packs every several sunny days. Putting them in the desert is a no-brainer. The reason why you want all these batteries is because you can make iridium sprinklers and you can also make crystallariums along with a few other items. But crystallariums and iridium sprinklers are absolutely overpowered and they will make your farming adventure a lot easier in this game. The crystallarium here, for example, can replicate any gem that you put inside it. Most people put in jades, but you can also put in diamonds for money. You can put in star shards for money. You can even put in quartz if you want bombs and you can, you can put in loads of stuff in it to trade for other useful items in the game. Next up, let's talk about goat's cheese. So I have an autograph here, it's filled up with large goat's milk. All this large goat's milk is going to turn into gold star goat's cheese. Now gold star goat's cheese is an absolutely amazing item for health, for energy, but also for profit, especially if you have the artisan profession, you can sell this. But here's the thing. In this game, we are given a very limited space for casks. Most people put ancient fruit wine into casks. My advice is to not put wine into the casks in the basement of your house. Instead, put goat cheese in there. It's a much faster method to make loads of money in this game. And if you don't want to make tons of money using goat's cheese, you can always just use it to heal yourself if you're going to the Skull Cavern, or if you're even going to the hardened version of the mines. It only takes seven days for these casks to convert a gold star goat's cheese into an iridium star goat's cheese. And the difference between a gold star and iridium star goat's cheese is staggering. Not only will it give you a lot more health and energy, but it will also sell for a lot more gold. So if you have a limited amount of space in your farm, if you just have a few casks, process the animal products instead of processing the wine because the wines take far too long to make profit from. Fair enough, you can make huge profits from Iridium Star aged Zavrut wine, but you'll make money much faster from Iridium Star goat's cheese. The next tip I have for you today is how to increase your farming proficiency through the use of a bone mill. Now, a bone mill can be gotten through the fragments of the past Special Orders quest. And this is given to you by Gunther, where he wants you to collect some bone fragments for himself. Best way by far to get bone fragments in this game is to equip your burglar rings, take a monster musk, unlock the hardened version of the mines, go down here to the, to the 70s floors, and just start farming the skeletons, and they will drop tons of bone fragments for you. The reason why you want tons of bone fragments is to put them into the bone mills to get back lots and lots of farming goodies. Bone mills can give you absolutely amazing items, and if you come down here with a, a weapon, any weapon that has the Crusader enchant, you will do additional damage to these skeletons, killing them very, very quickly. As we can see, it only takes a few swings from this weapon to take those skeletons out. If we put bone shards into the bone mills right now, we're going to get back some amazing items, and these items include tree fertilizer which is absolutely amazing for making tree farms deluxe speed grow quality fertilizer all of these items will greatly enhance the crops in your farm allowing you to make huge profits 
The beauty of the bone mill is that it doesn't just take bone shards, it takes a huge array of different bone and fossil related items, making it a very versatile processing machine. So I'm going to leave the video there, I hope you enjoyed it. As per usual, I will upload the next Stardew Valley video in the next few days. Also stay tuned for the special 3k subscriber Stardew Valley videos, they will be 100 day videos and they are currently in progress. I should have them made in the next few weeks and I will give you plenty of notice before they are released to build up the hype around them. So I hope to see you in the next video and I hope you have a great week, bye for now.